Welcome to this video tutorial, which explains the procedure for submitting single locus sequences, such as DNA barcodes, to GenBank, and how DNA Convert, one of the programs developed in the iTaxo Tools project, can assist in this process. Integrative alpha taxonomy is typically carried out by small teams of researchers and is based on small to medium sized datasets. Overall, between 15 and 20,000 new species are scientifically named and described each year and single locus sequence analysis is increasingly part of these studies. On completion of a typical taxonomic sequencing project, a researcher will have single locus sequences, such as DNA barcodes, for a few dozen to a few hundred specimens. Additionally, there may be sequences of a few additional lauci, for example, and organellar locus, such as mitochondrial CO1, plus a few nuclear-encoded lauci. After quality control of the chromatograms, the sequences are usually available in FASTA format. In a separate video tutorial, we have already explained why it can be advantageous to manage and curate such small to medium-sized sequence datasets with the associated metadata in spreadsheet editors. Please refer to this tutorial for more details on this aspect. The submission of DNA sequences to one of the three databases of the International Nucleotide Database Collaboration is a requirement for the publication of research utilizing these sequences. Additionally, for future research, it is of high importance to make these datasets accessible and reusable. The three databases are the DNA Data Bank of Japan, the European Nucleotide Archive, and GenBank, which is part of the National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI. Here, we refer primarily to NCBI GenBank because NCBI has a dedicated taxonomy database with specialized curators, making it particularly suitable for DNA sequence sets obtained in the context of taxonomic studies. The first step of the sequence submission procedure is to prepare all data locally and offline, converting them into the appropriate format for submission. In the following, we will explain, using a real example from our own research, how spreadsheet-organized sequences can be easily submitted to GenBank. Besides explaining the specific formatting of the input data, we will also illustrate step-by-step -step the process of submission to GenBank. The columns of this table have already been organized in a way that is roughly compatible with the metadata structure in GenBank. Specifically, GenBank requires a unique identifier for the source of each sequence. This means that one of the so-called source modifiers, either specimen voucher, isolate, clone, or strain, needs to be selected. The sequences here are derived from amphibian specimens, and we specify their field numbers under the source modifier called isolate. In addition, for some samples, their catalog numbers in public zoological collections are provided in the column Specimen Voucher. You can find a full list of source modifiers in the web documentation of GenBank. The more information you specify for your sequences, the better. For instance, information such as the date of collection or geographical coordinates can be useful for future researchers reusing the sequences. To specify the specimen voucher, NCBI has a separate database with approved collection acronyms. If your samples come from one of the collections listed there, make sure to use the acronym as specified. If your specimen comes from a collection not listed there, GenBank will also accept other collection acronyms. And one more note. The GenBank submission strategy described herein uses the possibility to add source modifier information in the FASTA definition line of the submitted sequences, as we will see in the following. The first link in this slide provides more information about this format. Alternatively, there is also a possibility to specify the source modifiers in a separate table and submit the table and sequences separately. See the second link in this slide for more information on this alternative strategy to specify these metadata during submission. In addition to the information on isolate or specimen voucher, it is also necessary to specify information on the geographic provenance of the samples. This is done using the source modifier called country. Here, the country is given first, followed by a colon and the specific locality, which should always be provided when available. The GenBank documentation website provides a list of accepted country names, and it is mandatory to write country names exactly as required. Additionally, 
Please note that as of June 2024, the country source modifier will be changed to geo underscore locky underscore name. We will update our tool DNA Convert to account for this change. When preparing the GenBank formatted FASTA file, remove all previously published sequences that may have been included in your table. The column containing the sequence should be named Sequence. The first column should be a unique identifier for each sequence called SecID, which serves to identify the sequence during the submission process. Although there are ways to submit sequences of different markers simultaneously, we highly recommend including only sequences of one marker in one submission, as we will do in this tutorial. For sequences of other markers, the process will then need to be repeated. Copy the sequences and metadata from your spreadsheet editor, paste them into a text editor, and save them as a tab-separated values text file, a so-called TSV file. The next step is to use DNA Convert, a small converter program developed in the iTaxo Tools project, to transform the TSV file into a FASTA file. For this, specify tab for the input file and FASTA underscore GB export for the output file. DNA Convert has been programmed to be robust against minor user mistakes. For example, if some columns do not contain sequences, a specific warning is issued, but the program proceeds with the conversion. The program also issues a warning if some sequences are shorter than 200 base pairs, which is the minimum length required for GenBank submission. The result of the conversion is a FASTA file, where the source modifier information is given in brackets in each sequence header. If you plan to submit sequences of several markers, it is a good idea to add the name of the marker to the SEC ID at the beginning of the FASTA definition line. You can do this manually or by using search and replace for the entire sequence set. There is always a risk that sequences get mixed up or that mistakes occur when specifying the metadata. We highly recommend, from the submission FASTA file, to quickly infer a phylogenetic tree using a simple program such as MEGA to verify that all sequences cluster according to species as expected and that all metadata are correctly assigned to samples. There are different pipelines for submitting sequences to GenBank, depending on the marker and the sequencing method. For example, special submission pipelines and databases within NCBI exist for submitting raw data from high-throughput approaches or assembled genomes. The procedures explained here are suitable for single-marker sequences typically obtained by Sanger sequencing. If these sequences are from standard markers, you can use the Submission Portal Pipeline. To submit sequences to NCBI, you need to create an account in the Submission Portal and log in, which you can do, for instance, using your ORCID account. After logging in to the NCBI Submission Portal, you can start a new submission by clicking the respective button. You then have to specify the marker you want to submit. The submission portal allows the submission of several highly used markers, such as ribosomal RNA genes or the DNA barcode gene CO1. For sequences of other genes, as of 2023, they need to be submitted via Bankit, which we will show in the third chapter of this tutorial. In our example, we have sequences of the mitochondrial large subunit RNA gene, that is, the 16SR RNA. On the next page, the contact information of the submitter needs to be specified. In the first step, we need to specify the sequencing technology, which in our case is Sanger sequencing without subsequent assembly. In the next step, the FASTA file containing the sequences and the source modifier information is uploaded. On the same page, the release date of the sequence records also needs to be specified. Because our submission contains unpublished scientific names of new species, we specify a later release date here to ensure that the records with the new names will not be released before publication of the respective paper. After pressing the Continue button, the uploaded sequences and metadata undergo automatic quality control. In the next step, source modifiers can be specified or uploaded as a separate table. In our case, we can simply press the Continue button because we have already included the source modifier information in the FASTA file. The automatic quality control often encounters minor formatting mistakes or other errors. In our example, 
it noted that one name is not included in the GenBank taxonomy database. If this was due to a typing error, we need to correct it and re-upload the FASTA file. In our case, the unrecognized name is a new taxon, so we simply press the Continue button. In the next step, we can specify that the unrecognized name refers to a new species, an option that also includes new subspecies, as in our example. On the next page, we have to specify the sequence authors and the title of the study. On the final page of the submission pipeline, the records are shown as they will be included in the GenBank database. After review, the submission can be confirmed and finalized. You can check the status of your submission on the main page of the submission portal. If you have sequences of other markers, such as fragments of nuclear-encoded genes of eukaryotes, you currently need to use the Bankit online pipeline for submission. This is specified in the respective menu when your sequences do not belong to one of the other categories listed. If you have fragments of protein coding genes as in our example, there is an additional preparation step. To simplify the submission, if you have fragments of a coding gene without introns, we recommend ensuring that they all start with the same reading frames. This is not always guaranteed if some sequences have missing data at the beginning, as in this example of sequences of the recombination activating gene 1. After translation to amino acids, we see that the sequences without missing data are all translated to amino acids and therefore represent full codons with the first, second, and third nucleotide positions, starting with reading frame 1. However, some of the shorter sequences do not. Upon closer inspection, we see that in this example, all of them start with a second codon position. To be able to use the submission procedure as explained here, it is important that this issue is fixed. You can go back to the chromatograms and see if the respective nucleotides can be reconstructed without compromising sequence quality. Alternatively, you can trim the sequences, which may be acceptable if the respective nucleotide positions do not contain important phylogenetic information. It is also possible to submit sequences starting at different reading frames in an aligned format to GenBank, but this is not further explained here. Once the FASTA file with sequences and metadata has been prepared as indicated in the previous slides, begin the Bankit submission. In this pipeline, the sequence authors are specified in one of the first pages. Specify that your sequences represent genomic DNA and upload the FASTA file containing sequences and source modifier metadata. In most taxonomic datasets, specifying that your sequences represent a phylogenetic study will probably be adequate. The sequences we are submitting represent an original submission. Several other pages of the Bankit submission pipeline are equivalent to those of the submission portal and are therefore not shown here. As a final step in Bankit, the sequence features need to be specified. In our example, the submission consists of intronless coding sequences only, and in this case, the feature is easiest to specify using the Intervals option. Since we have sequenced a fragment of RAG1, the sequences are incomplete at both ends. In the next step, we need to specify the genetic code, which in our case is standard. If we have specified the wrong reading frame, an error message appears. As long as all sequences are in the same reading frame, we can easily correct this by choosing the correct reading frame and then pressing the Accept button at the end of the page again. We can then review the translated amino acid sequences. After reviewing the translated amino acid sequences, we can then review the dataset once more before confirming the submission. Always keep in mind that there are other ways of preparing the data for submission to GenBank, and depending on your specific dataset, it might be easier to choose an alternative strategy. Additionally, NCBI is constantly updating and improving their submission pipelines, so some of the pages and procedures may differ from those shown here at the time you want to submit your own sequences. However, based on our experience with hundreds of submissions of taxonomic datasets, we recommend the strategy explained here for small to medium-sized sequence sets generated in taxonomic studies. To learn more about the iTaxo Tools project, consult the website, manuals, and publications.